Welcome back to the special broadcast by Business Day TV and the Sunday Times, unpacking the latest trends in our elections just a couple of days before South Africans go to the polling uh, voting stations in the larger numbers. My name is Sam Amkwakeli. My guests are Tanya Van Mielis, Head of Policy at Kosatu, and Kulegane Mate, CEO designated Busa. Welcome. So, we're going to an election. You want uh, the ANC to get 50%. And what's your research showing you? We, we want over 50 percent, Sam. We optimistic. Want we want majority. We want but yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, there are two things that make us optimistic now. The one is the polling is trending upwards. So we're heading in the right direction. The second thing is because we've got boots on the ground campaigning in different provinces, in different communities, we're getting feedback directly from people on the ground on what they like, what they don't like. And Kasatu leadership is also specifically targeting people that don't necessarily support the ANC. It goes to what you know, problematic areas to engage. And the feedback from people on the ground is that people love the ANC, that there's a very strong sentiment towards the ANC, that they'll be voting for the ANC. So we hope to see that sentiment translate into the numbers on voting day. Okay, Kulakan, your side and market sentiment, are you picking up anything that you could, that you could share with us? Maybe business voice and expectation? I mean, so obviously, um, the, you know, markets want uh, certainty. Um, and so, you know, f whatever comes out of here, we would not want to see uh, massive disruptions that uh, make things, make it difficult for markets to work out w where things are going. And, and I'm driving here towards uh, saying that we would hope that in the event that there are coalitions, whether they are in provinces or at a national level or both, that there is sufficient maturity to really make things work. We just cannot afford to have the, the chaos that is playing out in some of our cities, in Joburg in particular, paralyze the rest of the country. This is the seed our economic capital, if you like, drive through Joburg and see how in bad shape it is. Potholes every, everywhere, things are just not working. In part, it just has to do with it. You haven't had a stable government that is able to focus in running the city and make it work. So, so we, we would urge that where there are coalitions, let's really be mature about it and make sure that governance still continues and that there is stability, that there is continued uh, uh, production of economic uh, 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 goods and services that are necessary to, to, to drive the economy. Okay. Are there things that freak you out as uh, the business and we look at the possibilities and uh, on the scenarios on coalitions? No, they don't. I mean, I know that it uh, makes for, 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 for news uh, to talk about these doomsday uh, uh, scenarios of uh, coalitions, this one in coalition with that one, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we, 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 we just looking at the policies and looking at what the different parties stand for that are likely to go into a coalition. And ours is that whoever gets into that coalition, they had better be committed to strengthening governance in this country, make sure things run. I mean. We know all of us have had our stints in the public service at some point, how hollowed out the public service is. We've got to commit and build state capacity, make sure that there is no unnecessary uh, uh, political interference in, in what happens and really have a professional uh, public service that, that is committed to serving the country. So those things are important so that whatever happened, it happens in the politics, Everybody, the market and so on, can be sure that the country, the country will continue to run. So those things are, are what we would uh, expect to see in the making of the coalitions and most certainly beyond at uh, that point. Does it matter who the finance minister is? It doesn't matter the individual necessarily. Um, so we wouldn't be pronouncing ourselves and saying, oh, we would prefer that person over that person. But we think that uh, we have a finance minister who has steered the ship um, uh, very well um, and, and the, the markets uh, 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 kind of understand uh, his headspace, where he's going and how he's running the economy. Uh, we don't want a repeat of what happened uh, when there was a minister brought in for four days. That's as far as I will go. 
Okay. Mm. Uh, Tanya, on your side, does it matter who the finance minister is? Do you have any preference? Also, I wouldn't put names. Um, certainly, we would want to see reforms in uh, monetary policy and fiscal policy. But that wouldn't then depend on an individual. It would depend on the position that the party and the cabinet are taking. Yeah. What, what, if I may raise one other point. What, what I do agree on in terms of what you're saying. You agree me with me on many things. Okay, well, I'll find something to disagree with then. <laughs> Is driving implementation, but also that we need to be sure that we are all chasing the same priorities. So that our actions actually do result in, in implementation on the ground. So for Kosatu, we would want industrialization, delivery of services, fixing SOEs, creating jobs and decent work as the priorities. Okay. Do you have any examples in terms of uh, uh, what is it, uh, fiscal policy reforms, monetary policy reforms? That you just maybe one example of each that you would want? Or so in, in, in terms of monetary policy reforms now, I mean, I think monetary policy is too tight, and I think it's restricting growth. If we're able to start bringing interest rates down, we do believe that it would have a, a positive impact on growth, but it also have a positive impact on consumers who are now overly indebted and unable to spend sufficiently into the economy without raising more debt. So th that would be in that area. On fiscal policy, it would really be to make sure that sufficient resources are allocated to the state to deliver social services. And then also that we're making sure that enough money is going into economic infrastructure to drive growth and development. Yeah, okay. okay. So, Kosatu, if we were to choose, I mean, the ANC had to choose between the DA, EFF, what would it uh, choose in a case if it, if it was in the room in the discussion? I think that's a hard, a very hard question because there are pros and cons with every potential alliance. So, for example, if the ANC were to get into an alliance with the DA, are we, as Kasatu, able to say, well, we think that's a, it's a great idea given that the DA was protesting in front of Kasatu House saying that the minimum wage should be done away with? Uh, th there's a fundamental difference between how we see the economy growing and what the role of workers is. Mm -hmm. If we have to speak to the EFF, there are challenges there as well. Uh, the one in terms of how they engage in Parliament is a very different style to the way the ANC engages in Parliament. Um, and what would we find more effective? What would, you know, what do we find more acceptable or not? Do we want to nationalise the entire economy? Well, that's not Kasatu's position. So how would those kind of issues be worked out in any potential lines? It's a ca we have to weigh it on a case-by-case -case basis and an issue-by-issue -issue basis. No, Julius Malema said he wants uh, Floyd Chibambu as our finance minister. Well, good. <laughs> Is that an equivalent of the four days <laughs> <laughs> or not? <laughs> what would the market sentiment be or, or in that case? What do you guys think? Which, uh, uh, what do you attach uh, re market reaction to each of the scenarios? Are you able to? So, I mean, you're probably better placed to, to engage on this. I think markets would be very worried about an ANC-EFF alliance. I think it would shake markets significantly. Okay. W we would continue to engage government as we are currently doing. Hopefully, hopefully there would be willingness on the part of government to engage us as, as business, um, which, you know, whatever the coalition um, and the partners in that coalition uh, looks like, we, we would continue to engage because as business, we believe that uh, we are a critical player in this economy, but that we need a government that we can work with to fix things that are broken in this economy. So to us, it is absolutely critical to have people running this government who are committed to fixing things. There's just too much that is broken for us to start fiddling with other things that are currently working. In fact, we're fixing things that used to work and because the attention moved somewhere else, things broke and we can't afford more of that to happen. 
Kulagane, do you ever get to sit down? I mean, you've got particular uh, interesting experience. Uh, your time in the state and being involved in the planning commission uh, that uh, gave us the blueprint, uh, national development plan. Nobody talks about it anymore, for, uh, mm. which should actually concern us. Do you ever get to sit and think it about how badly things went from this great plan and we just lost our way somehow? Well, I mean, uh, business has, has always supported the national development plan. Um, business came out when it was uh, uh, launched and said, here is a plan, we support it, and we would like to put our weight behind it, implementing it. I think that um, the, 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 the disease, I'm going to call it a disease that we have as South African, is that we just easily lose focus, right? For a few years, uh, you know, it was talk of the town, um, but then we lost focus. Other things became more important, and, and we lost track. Uh, in terms of trying to work towards the targets that are set out uh, in the NDP. It's not too late. We might not make and meet the targets by 2030, but actually setting on a cause and staying that cause over the long term delivers results. You see this in all of the economies that have grown and grown consistently over a period of time. It's because they stay the cause. We just change, chop and change too much, and this is why we end up being where we are. Okay, uh, tell, how do you deal with this disease? I mean, he puts it beautifully there, that uh, we get uh, easily distracted. How do you guys help us? Uh, and your, what's your contribution to uh, helping us stay on, on a path, a sustainable path? Well, I mean, uh, if, if I had to look at why is it that we get distracted? So what's the cause of the distraction? A lot of policy that's developed is, fudges over some of the key conflicts, but it also includes inputs from everybody, which is great, we are democracy. But when your policy is very wide, incorporating a wide range of interests and not actually making tough decisions, then it means I can interpret the policy one way, you'll interpret the policy another way, and you'll interpret it another way. And we all think we're implementing policy, whereas we're all just in implementing specific aspects of policy going in different directions. The key to ensuring that we're mobilizing towards a common goal and implementing that is making sure that we agree on the priorities and that we have coordination within government departments, within the state, and between the various social partners. Okay, thank you, uh, Tanya. Kulekani, you, say you have the last word uh, on this election, positivity, negativity, risks, opportunities. I mean, we, we would really just, uh, first and foremost, um, you know, politicians are out there campaigning and all of that. We would urge South Africans to go out in their numbers, exercise their right to vote, because this is an important exercise in a democracy. From a business point of view, uh, we would obviously um, uh, hope uh, that you know, whoever is elected into government continues on a reform path that is able to put this country and this economy on an inclusive growth part, path and, and, and higher levels of growth than where we are so that we're not arguing is it 0 0.6 or 0 0.7. In real terms, it's a zero. So we need higher levels of growth and we would hope that there's commitment to that uh, and, and unwavering commitment to, to, to that. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Kulegani Mate, CEO Designated Busa, Tanya Van Melis, Head of Policy at Cosato. Thank you for joining the special broadcast by Business Day TV and the Sunday Times. Goodbye.